It's the 30th of June. I've always wanted to play the bagpipes. Never mind. I can wear the kilt. But I wouldn't have been able to on this day in 1782. You see, if we were living in 1782, then tomorrow is the day they repeal the Prescription Act. That means that tomorrow you can wear a kilt, but today is against the law. I did a survey of my group on Facebook, and almost all of them said that for a formal do, they'd wear a kilt rather than a dinner suit. I'd be interested to know if that's any different for YouTube watchers, okay? If you go to a posh night out, are you wearing a dinner suit or a kilt? Answers in the YouTube comment section below. Now, the point is that 238 years ago today, the punishment would have been six months in prison for wearing a kilt, for a first offence. Transportation and indentured servitude for the further offences. To convict, it just needed one credible witness to say that they'd seen you wearing Highland dress and boom. Corroboration. <laughs> Imagine that. Somebody that the Crown says is credible says that they saw you with a kilt on twice and you're off to a penal colony. Seems crazy, doesn't it? that it'd be against the law to wear your own national dress. Imagine if they stopped you playing the bagpipes. That would be even more mental. Well, now I want a gun. So let's summarise and grossly oversimplify in 30 seconds. Anti-Catholic politicians overthrew the English government in 1688. Details on my video, Birth of James VIII. This spilled over into Scotland and Ireland. Some people fought to bring back the original rightful king, Jacobites. A lot of people died in Ireland and Scotland. Scotland talked about having their own king back, so they were swallowed up by England. That made some Scots want the original king even more. A big counter-revolution was put down in 1715 and Highlanders lost the right to carry arms. 30 years later, it all happened again, but worse. So the British state wanted to make sure, that, as well as arms, they took away Highlanders' culture, language, freedoms and social structure. 35 seconds. But I needed the extra 5 seconds to fit in the bitterness. Now some of you will be even more embittered by the time I'm finished. Trust me on that one. Look, ultimately every regime imposes itself by force. Now, we can bang on about democracy, but at the end of the day, the state imposes its will with the ultimate threat of violence. And for that to work, the regime has to have the weapons. It's no good trying to impose parental discipline if your son does kickboxing and your daughter's got a flick knife. And they're both demanding a paternity suit. In 17th century Britain, there was part of the population that had never accepted the legitimacy of the current regime. But the regime didn't tolerate dissent. Now, dissent appeared to be coming from the Highlands, so the Highlands had to be crushed, but crushed mercilessly, totally and utterly. And that's why after the Battle of Culloden in 1746, they passed the Act of Prescription. Now, there had been a ban on weapons after the uprising in 1715, but this time it was going to have to stick. You weren't allowed weapons before, you definitely aren't allowed them now. Now, I think most of us in the UK look at gun-toting Americans and we think they're so nutty, no wonder their grey squirrels are massive. And then you look at what happened to Highlanders when their weapons were taken away from them and you think, hmm, maybe an ER-15 for squirrel hunting is not such a bad idea after all. Don't worry, no red squirrels were harmed in the making of this video. Of course, it wasn't just that they took away the Highlanders' weapons. I heard of a man being executed post culloden for using the weapon of war known as bagpipes. The deadly bagpipes. Imagine if every month or so we heard in the news that some American had gone crazy and rampaged through a shopping centre with a set of bagpipes. A SWAT team are on the scene. Six people are dead and several others have suffered burst eardrum wounds. Police are investigating whether or not it was some kind of terrier incident. I'm just saying that Americans wouldn't seem so crazy if bagpipes were a weapon of war. So, they didn't just stop at banning weapons. The kilt is banned too. 
In our parent analogy earlier, it's like saying to your daughter, put down the flick knife, and by the way, you're not going out dressed like that. Now, I don't want to be too frivolous, because the impact was brutal. Okay, bear with me for a bit. To say, not to a teenage girl, but to an entire people, we're going to strip you naked of all that represents you and what you represent. Each morning at school, children are forced to pray for the king that their parents tell them is an imposter. Can you imagine what that does to a kid? The Chinese might seem masters of indoctrinating poor Uyghurs in re-education camps, but they stole that technology from us. So, it's the 30th of June, and I'm wearing a kilt to make the point that 238 years ago today, it was against the law. And then, on the 1st of July, 1782, the London government graciously gave us permission to wear kilts. And so far, that permission has remained. But remember, what London gives, it can also take away. Seem ridiculous? People come across the Atlantic and they wonder why Scots don't know about the smash TV hit show Outlander, set in the Jacobite period. Well, in 2014, a referendum on Scottish independence came close to toppling the British establishment, and that could never be allowed. All cultural references had to be removed. Now, in the run-up to the referendum, Outlander was banned by David Cameron in case it gave Scots a sense of what the British state is capable of. And after... Scottish strawberries started to become British strawberries and saltars were replaced by Union flags, making the taste just that little bit more bitter. No more Scottish beef. I've even seen whiskey and haggis labelled as British rather than Scottish. Imagine Nicola Sturgeon declares a second independence referendum, giving the Scottish people the right to express their opinion. An opinion that the majority of Scots say that they want to express, but the London overlords tell us is their right to grant. When Nicola Sturgeon gives the people their democratic voice, you can be sure that Boris Johnson will en enact a new law that criminalises the kilt, iron brew, speaking with a Scottish accent and belief in the Loch Ness Monster. Anything that Scots take any kind of pride in will be banned in order to protect the British state. How does that make you feel? I'll be honest, some of the stuff I just said isn't actually true. I just wanted to see how it made you feel. I'm hoping that I aroused emotional responses from both sides of the political divide. And if you're not Scottish or a Highlander, and this all seems a bit parochial, imagine how it would feel if everything that gave you a sense of cultural identity was taken from you. I'm just trying to give you just the tiniest soup song of a taste of what 1746 politics must have been like. Obviously, from the Hanoverian perspective, a bunch of hairy, maggot-ridden, claymore-wielding, murdering, baby-eating Highlanders with an alternative on the constitutional arrangements have crossed the border, threatened order, and they don't even speak English. The regime control in the British state had come close to being overturned, so they banned Highland dress. In 2014, the Scottish independence referendum came close to doing the same, so they banned Scottish strawberries. They are the most seditious of fruits, though, aren't they? Scots are still at each other's throats six years after a democratic referendum. But imagine six months ago we'd been in a shooting war. Now, the good news is that I'm not suggesting the British state is uniquely evil. I'm saying people are. Would the Stuart monarchs have been that much different? I doubt it. They're not taking our strawberries because we're Scottish. If Wales, the West Country, Cornwall was as uppity as us jocks, then they'd ban Welsh rarebit and Cornish pasties too. If the Chinese state thinks that Uyghurs or democracy in Hong Kong will threaten the regime, they'll clamp down. Your body will produce antibodies to protect itself from coronavirus. Organisms act to protect themselves. And when the organism feels safe, for example, on the 1st of July 1782, then the organism will let you wear a kilt again. By 1822, even the Hanoverian monarch, George IV, was wearing a kilt on his visit to Scotland. That's when Highland dress was properly rehabilitated, because the threat was finally over. Or was it? 
I said at the end of this video, you'd know whether I had anything on under the kill. Now that's still to be revealed, so hold on, it's just a second. Obviously, I'd love you to like and share this video. If you enjoy the videos that I create, then there's also a link in the description section below where you can click and buy me a coffee just to say thanks, or you can support me on a regular basis and help me to make more videos for you in the future. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I mean, Doc is going to be a lot of my life. Cheerio and Rasta.